Yo, yo, what it do? Welcome to Cine 230 Remix Cultures. This is week five, day two. I actually just got so into this trademark shit that uh, I thought I'd just sit down here on my tractor and talk about it a little bit more today. So uh, didn't, you know, get too fancy with the uh, location on the farm, you know, or the placement of the camera, none of that stuff. We're just going, you know, real, real utilitarian based. Uh, right now, but I, I promise you I'll take you to some other places uh, out here. wish I had like a film crew to, to help me and all that stuff, but I uh, hope you're good. Uh, you can follow along uh, on the Trademark 2 uh, PowerPoint slides for this, you know, just to kind of keep you in the loop. Um, but definitely make sure you're watching these videos. Um, as painful as it is to like sit down and listen to my ass for a couple hours a week, uh, that's where like the meat and pota potatoes of it all is, you know, the slides are just, they're just slides. Um, a lot of them just have images and stuff. So, you know, fortunately, uh, taking some notes, listening to your boy over here is, is important. But we'll start with this. Anybody seen this before? Now, you know, it's a little tomato soup, a uh, little Campbell's tomato soup. This is, uh, you know, if you're into art, at all, and you remember we talked about a couple weeks ago with the Mickey Mouse image. This is actually a Warhol image that he did of a Campbell soup can and part of his like pop art uh, that he did. And um, you know, again, well, what do you think Campbell's did? You know, because he, again, he's selling these for big bucks. Um, you know, and and you know, here's what Campbell's did. You know, they decided to kind of do what Disney did. They're like, yo, like. Warhol is huge right now. He's going to make Campbell's soup iconic popular culture. In fact, he did. I mean, even to the point where you have like these graffiti pieces. These are actually classic New York City graffiti pieces done by Fab Five Freddy. Um, you know, and they're like, like in like kind of like, they may not look that amazing to you, but they're just important because they're an homage to what Warhol did. But people at Campbell's Soup, you know, they really basically we're thrilled to have Warhol do, you know, I mean, come on, it's just fucking tomato soup, right? To make it into popular culture. So, um, but people at Campbell's Soup, you know, they really basically were thrilled to have Warhol do, you know, I mean, come on, it's just fucking tomato soup, right? To make it into popular culture. So, um, you check out this, uh, this image of the Campbell Soup Company, it's a letter from William McFarland, and I'll read it to you because I, you know, I just like reading. I read to my son every day, so I'll read to y'all. It's like you're my kids. Um, Dear Mr. Warhol, I have followed your career for some time. Your work has evoked a great deal of interest here at Campbell's Soup Company for obvious reasons. And this is from 1964. At one time, I had hoped to be able to acquire one of your Campbell's Soup label paintings, but I'm afraid you're you have gotten too uh, gotten too much expensive for me. Much too expensive for me. Sorry, dyslexia. Uh, <laughs> um, I want to tell you, however, that we, uh, that we admired your work and have since learned that you like tomato soup. I love that he capitalizes tomato soup. Um, that you like tomato soup. Um, ask, I'm taking the liberty of having a couple cases of our tomato soup delivered to you at this address, which was his, his, um, his, uh, his art studio. Uh, we wish you continued success and good fortune. I mean, again, this was just like, yeah, probably trademark infringement, but like sometimes that can be really good for you depending on who's doing the infringing. So they, they kind of exploited this, this relationship uh, in the art done by Warhol here. But what this does bring up is infringing on trademarks. Now, if you read Boyer's chapter, which I know you all have read every single word of, you have a little sense of what infringing on trademarks is, what it isn't. Um, but basically what infringing infringement is, is you are diluting the distinctiveness of someone's trademark by using it. So when you, you know, um, appropriate a logo or catchphrase by a famous brand or a non-famous brand or whatever, you are weakening, you're diluting the value of its mark. The same if, if you um, want to critique that, that brand name by using it, its logo or something like that, or that company, that's also considered dilution, okay? So basically, this typically um, 
is in the realm of famous marks because it's harder to dilute a mark like Andre's dispensaries. First of all, it's not very distinct. Second of all, it's not very famous yet. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, if you use like a famous mark, that's where the issues are. So there's two levels, um, there are two different types of, of blurring. Um, I mean, two different types of dilution. One is blurring and the other is tarnishment. Blurring is when you use a famous mark in a different product market. So uh, Walt Disney Company beer or Disney beer, you know, uh, you know, uh, Nike paper towels, you know, or, or, or whatever, you know, um, you know, Sony rolling papers, whatever, whatever it is, right? You're, you're basically exploiting that famous mark to sell your, your products, okay? The next is tarnishment. This is when you use a, a famous trademark typically to critique that company, but the, um, the appropriation is so substantially similar or substantially similar enough, even though it's critical, even though it's likely a fair use, um, that, and it's in products in the marketplace in which the trademark owner is, um, it will be infringement or dilution, okay? So just, just n note that. So um, you make a brand, so one is blurring, you are exploiting uh, a famous trademark um, in a different product market, or tarnishment, where you're making a famous trademark look bad, but it's in a way that's confusing to consumers, or it's on goods or service, goods provided by that company. So we'll go through some examples. So one of the first cases I get into is uh, GoGo Sports um, versus Major League Baseball Properties. And um, what it is, is basically, you, you, you know, you recognize the San Francisco Giants logo, which is on top. Uh, GoGo Sports was doing like, they had like little tourist sort of tchotchke so shops where they sold like hoodies and bottle openers and keychains with San Francisco, California logo on it in the same text or similar text and style as the San Francisco Giants logo. Now what ended up happening is, you know, uh, the Giants, once they found out, they thought their mark was being blurred or, or whatever. Um, and so what they did is they went after GoGo Sports. GoGo Sports said, hey, listen, you know, y'all didn't register for a trademark on it. But it didn't matter because uh, the San Francisco Giants have been using that logo for, I mean, I believe almost a century, um, at, you know, up until that point. So they didn't have it registered. They had a common law trademark on it, but it was a very powerful common law trademark. And so just so you know, is it blurring or tarnishing? It's clearly blurring, right? They're using, you know, they're creating consumer confusion by using a famous mark um, on, other, on other products. Is it a fair use? Hell no, right? 